Hey guys, and welcome to Comics and Chill. Back in 2006, the video game developer Bungie teamed up with Marvel to release the Halo graphic novel, the video game franchise's first foray into the comics medium. I remember seeing this book advertised like crazy at the time, but not having an Xbox had minor knowledge of the franchise. I eventually picked it up from my local library and was absolutely blown away by the murderous row of talent that they'd assembled for this book. And today, we will be looking at my favourite story from the book, Second Sunrise Over New Mombasa, by Brett Lewis and Mobius. But before we dig into this, I'd like to direct you to my very own comic, currently running on Kickstarter, Gifford the Clown, Issue 1. It follows the adventures of two mercenaries who are forced to escape the concrete hell that is Kowloon Walt City after a simple extraction mission goes horribly wrong. It is over 40 pages of non-stop action with art by the incredible Joe Bieman and Stefano Cardicelli. All links to the campaign, trailer and more information are in the description below. But now back to Halo. The purpose of the Halo graphic novel was to pad out the world of Halo with stories that ran tangentially to the main story in the game. Now I'm still not big on the Halo lore, so fans please have mercy on me here if I get some of the deets wrong. But I am a fan of the character, character design and world design and some of the comic books that I've read surrounding the franchise. As the title suggests, this story is set in the city of New Mombasa before a massive attack from the alien species known as the Covenant. The plot follows a photographer whose PR firm works exclusively for the military, manipulating, or as he calls it, formatting photos and footage that is presented to the public to hide the fact that humanity is losing the war against the Covenant. At first, he's enjoying his work. He's getting paid handsomely and he still considers himself something of an artist, but we catch him at a point in his life where the guilt and disillusionment is reaching its peak, um, as is the war. It's a great commentary on, you know, war and media spin and how these horrific events that are happening far away can seem like a distant problem as long as they're presented to people in just the right way. There's this great scene where there's this high-ranking military dude over the main character's shoulder sort of um, backseat driving his work, telling him to digitally remove gunshot wounds and blood, etc. Uh, make things look more heroic. At one point, the military guy says, oh, you need to, you know, can you make this seem a bit more adventurous? And the photographer's like, can you be more specific? And the military man says, yeah, tr you know, try to give it like 25% more of a feeling of adventure. <laughs> and uh, this is a conversation I feel like I've had when I used to work in graphic design, like where you're talking to a sort of an executive or a client and maybe they don't know how to communicate with you. But I found that part funny in that regard. The photographer's response is like, you know, he's just kind of fed up and, and sort of busting the guy's balls. And he's like, why can't we just tell them what's going on, tell them that we're losing and sort of rally everyone together to try and beat this. And, you know, the military man gives him this response of, if people in England in the 1500s knew that a life was lost for every pound of tea to arrive in London, there would have been no British Empire. And that sort of depressing factoid really sets the tone for this entire story. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much more about the plot because it is a short comic, it's only 14 pages. And I'd really encourage you to go and check it out for yourself. Uh, but what I will do is talk a little bit more about the art and the creative team behind this. Now, this is a licensed comic for a video game. And it has absolutely no right to be as good as it is. Uh, not only is it drawn by Mobius, whose legendary status I don't need to explain here. But it was written by one of my all-time favourite writers, a guy named Brett Lewis. Now, Lewis may not be a household name to some of you, but a lot of his earlier work is scattered across several licensed comics, including, but not limited to, Scooby-Doo and the Powerpuff Girls. But where his work really shines is in his creator-owned book, The Winter Men, uh, which was co-created with another artistic god, John Paul Leon, who tragically passed away uh, back in May of this year. Uh, a quick side note, there will definitely be dedicated videos to John Paul Leon, Brett Lewis, and the Wintermen on this channel eventually. That's always been my goal, but those creators and that work is just so intimidating. I want to make sure that I get it right. Uh, that 
The Winter Men is an absolute masterpiece. But with Brett Lewis, I have mainly read his uh, more creator-owned work, and every one of those stories just feels drenched in research that he is then able to process into a completely lived-in world with wonderfully flawed and sympathetic characters like, like few others can write. And even in this video game comic, he doesn't drop the ball for a second. His pages are often dense with dialogue and narration, but they are never a chore. Every character has a unique cadence and rhythm to their voice, using, you know, colloquialisms that are specific to their background. And Lewis, you know, he could write a story about a group of friends ordering takeout, and it would be a pure joy to read. And with Mobius, you know, what do I need to say? The guy is a master of shapes and directing the eye of the reader, even with these more unconventional page layouts and panel shapes he's using here. Also, this was drawn digitally, and I believe it was his first time doing so, or at least his first time completing a full comic story digitally. He was in his mid-60s, approaching 70, I think, when, when working on this, and he still took on the new task and challenge of working in a digital medium without missing a beat, which is extremely impressive to a Luddite like myself. I'm in my early 30s and I always struggle with tech. Most days I want to punt my computer out of the freaking window, all due to my technological ineptitude. But the use of digital tools here are almost unnoticeable in Mobius's work. The colours have a nice sort of uh, grainy paper texture to them. It kind of looks like uh, watercolour or Copic marker dried on paper. And the line weight on his organic figures is great. Uh, if not a little thicker and sort of um, goopier than we are used to in Mobius's figure drawing. Brett Lewis mentioned that uh, Mobius was even manually inserting imperfections into the digital art to sort of rough things up a little bit as he did not like uh, the perfection that it allowed. In the afterword, uh, Mobius said that he took the gig mainly because his son was a fan of the Halo games and that it had been a long time since he had worked with an American publisher. And as for Brett Lewis, he said he was a little apprehensive at first about working on the franchise as he was not much of a gamer himself, but after reading through every Halo book published at the time, uh, he became drawn to uh, New Mombasa and built the story out from there. This story was printed with three other stories in a nice hardcover edition put out by Marvel back in 2006. And as far as I know, it's been out of print for quite some time. I actually tried to find a physical copy for this video. But I do believe that Dark Horse are republishing this. They're putting out a new edition either at the end of this year or early next year. So it's worth picking up because some of the other creators in the book, uh, and I'll, I'll be focusing on probably all of the stories in this book. They're all great and have wonderful creative teams. But I really just wanted to highlight this one here as I was always interested in it myself and I couldn't find much information about its production online. So if anyone knows anything more about this, please let me know in the comments or email me or hit me up on Instagram as I'd really appreciate it. But that's it for now. Um, I'd like to remind you again to check out Gifford the Clown issue one on Kickstarter. And until next time, have a great day.